I recently took my diet very seriously. Um, last week I learned that there is a abnormality in my blood and for whatever reason that that spurred me to stop being part way committed to change willing to change willing to change well now I'm willing to change massively I would say that's the difference uh, I think that learning just a little bit about that made me really see that this isn't like something where I can say, well, I'll, I'll eat well for a while, like a year or two or something, and then I can have a little bit more of those snacky foods I love. It's more like, Tara, you never get to go back to those foods. And in my experience, when I have eaten a very healthy diet, going back to those foods, it's obvious they're not good for you. For me, I will speak for myself. Uh, so I'm gonna, this is chemo round three on the day I received chemo, so I call it day one. And the strap that you see here has in it um, a bag with a mixture, of, I think it's three chemo drugs, which will slowly be pumped through my port right here for 24 hours. So my next appointment is the time that we started this today. And then I'll have to go in, it'll be a few minutes tomorrow while they mix the medications, give them to me and it'll be a, bit, a little bit later each day because it takes a little while to get the medications mixed. So with that being said, I am using the information that I have to make a very specific diet and follow it with very little margin of error, you know. So I have greatly reduced my sugar intake. I already did that. I had already reduced it a lot, but I reduced it further. Um, I've reduced my carbohydrate intake overall, but I will say that carbohydrates do something for the nausea. And so right now, today I have potatoes in my soup. Potatoes seem to go really well for me anyway. Um, and so I'm about to start um, a beef bone soup. And I just got a cut of meat that has a pretty decent sized bone in it. And I'll cook that for at least five hours. And then I will remove the meat, but not the bone. And I'll let that chill overnight. And then the fat will come to the top and solidify, and I'll pull it off like in, in little sheets. It'll break it. Then I won't have the fat. That's how I do it, low fat. And then I'll take that broth and I'll put veggies in it. I won't use beef because right now I'm just now getting chemo, and the chemo is hot natured. So it will create heat in my body, which is like toxicity. And how do we get stuff out of our body? Liver and intestines are two major things that are hit with chemo. Uh, liver is going to be hit by any toxicity, but the large intestine really gets hit too, the intestines. The stomach is also greatly affected. Uh, and I can tell you that if I don't take a meprazole, I'll have acid reflux. Also, my digestion is greatly weakened by this process. And so eating foods that are well cooked is easier. And drink the broth right because there's a lot of nutrition in the broth and so I don't want to avoid eating the broth because any of the nutrition that got cooked out in there I'm going to get that by drinking the broth plus giving myself something that is really cooked so my collard greens or kale or whatever I'm putting in there when I make the soup tomorrow um, it'll break down the cell wall for me make it easier to digest and I'll get more nutrition into my body and then bone broth I'm cooking the bone and the bone has the nutrition for the marrow and the bones in the body. And our body, the long bones in our body are what make blood. So that's the, the line of thinking behind that. And chemo destroys blood cells. So the, the natural way to combat that with diet is to eat foods that build blood. So Dr. Renee, the doctor I'm seeing for Chinese medicine, herbs and acupuncture and food therapy guidance and other things that he does, uh, suggested that I eat three times as many blood builders as blood movers. And so for the foods that move blood, I keep those low, just put them in more for flavor. So I do three times as many blood builders as blood movers. Blood builders in particular are green leafy vegetables. I'm talking your dark green leafies. Um, 
collard greens, kale, spinach, bok choy. Those are the four that have been clearly uh, mentioned to me. I asked about beet greens, and he said, no, that's more of a blood mover. It carries blood up to the eyes, which is not a bad thing, but when I want to build blood, I want to eat a lot more, ratio, a higher ratio of the blood builders. So I said three to one. So for blood builders, three times as much as the blood movers. Broccoli, cauliflower will be blood movers, not builders. And I can't think of anything else right now. Um, but my, my soup right now is typically a protein, specifically chicken or fish. I think turkey fries should be fine. Um, I could use tofu in there too. And um, pork, lean pork could be used but I make a beef broth base from beef with bones. And then I take the beef out. Beef, mutton, lamb, bison, or buffalo are all in the family of warmer hot meats. They're too young. So I'm already getting heat from the chemo. I don't want to add more to that. So I'm going to do foods that are neutral or cooling. So that's where your chicken and fish fall. But the fish should be light colored, white fish. That's, that's, uh, cooler in nature than the fishes that have dark meat, so stay away from the dark meat fish. Um, if you make your own broth, try to have some bones in there that you can take out once you cooked everything. And I eat the ends of the bones where the marrow um, cells are. I've always done that actually. I like that part. Um, so even if I were eating wings, which I'm not saying are good to eat right now, but I've eaten wings in the past, <clears throat> and I just... I, Bite things up when I slow cook it, I can eat a little bit more of that. And um, mushrooms. I've been using button and portobello because they're available, but I want to get some reishi mushrooms from the Chinese market. The pharmacy has reishi. Uh, Dr. Renee said I can cook those in with my beef, and once it's cooked about five hours, you kind of extracted all of the nutrition from that. The reishi mushroom doesn't really have a taste. He said you can get it out. If you want to eat it, you can, but it doesn't really, there's not, it's not necessary to eat. What else is in my soup? So I have a broth, and then I have a protein, and then I have a, a green leafy, a dark green leafy, three times as much dark green leafy as other vegetables. Um, I typically use mushrooms, and then I've thrown in like a little bit of summer squash, like a yellow squash or zucchini. So tonight is about making the broth, and then letting it cool overnight so I can pull the, the fat off. Fat slows down the circulation of the lymph system, and I have lymphoma. And so it's collecting in my lymph system. I don't want to slow that down. I don't want my lymph system to slow down at all. There's my bones. And you can also do oxtail. I did oxtail last time, so I just got a shank. Shank is a little cheaper. Um, I'm going to throw it in frozen and let it cook. Uh, the cool thing about beef, when after it cooks and you let it cool, the fat congeals in a way it creates kind of like a disc. And it's very easy to remove. And it doesn't really... It's just easy to remove from the whatever you put it in. I just put the whole crock pot thing in. I let it cool down for a little bit on the counter. And I put it in the refrigerator. I'm actually starting at 5, so I'll have to either put it in the refrigerator around 10 or 10.30 or, you know, Chrissy help me out with that if I fall asleep. Take a look. Those look nice. Just water and beef shank. Ooh, nice color. If you look close, you can see the fat on the top. It has a yellowish color. This is three and a half hours. It was boiling a lot, so I turned it down to low. Let it. All right, here 
is what it looks like at the top. There wasn't as much fat when I use different cuts of meat. Sometimes it's solid all the way across, but let me show you real quick. There's not it's a lot, so. so. Thank you. 